a flake Don't run away From your feelings, babe Don't be afraid Don't be ashamed Don't hesitate to say Hey, babe Hey, babe Hey, babe Hey, babe Hey, babe hey, From the back to the middle and around again I'm gonna be there to the end 100% Hey, babe Hey, babe What's up, babe? How you doing? The LA edition of Hey, babe At the Edition Hotel We're the new, new edition This is it we found a couch in LA with pillows. This is it. No one can tell where you are. This, this is it. You're not solving problems. This is it. Look at us. We're in Los Angeles. We're in Los Angeles. Yeah. I came into the hotel with you uh, uh, before. I came up into your room. In the lobby right now, uh, he was there 20 minutes ago, Wilmer Valderrama. Woo! Wilmer Valderrama oh, from That 70s very Show. Very handsome. And what was his show on MTV? Whoops. What was the show on MTV? <laughs> <laughs> what was the show? I, I never heard of a show. Didn't Will Whoops. Devo- <laughs> Didn't Will DeValderrama have some show on MTV? <laughs> Wasn't it called like Whoops or was it Yo MTV Raps? It was no, called that Yo was Mama. Probably Freddy. Yo Mama. Oh, Do you remember the show? Your, no. You've never seen your mama? No. Dude, you, pull you it up. You've never seen your mama. Your mama. You ever seen your mama? <laughs> yo, yo, ma. Yo, yo, ma. Sorry. <laughs> yo, no, mama. Well, I'm actually talking about his little brother, yo, mama. Yo, mama. Yeah, yeah you've seen yo, 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 ma is a cellist. Cellist, but most but famous. yo, mama, is, is, it's got a little brother. Everybody knows that one cellist is yo, yo, ma. Yeah. Yo, you cellist. What? Said so you cellist. You cellist? You cellist. Look, yo, yo, look. yo, ma. Oh, my God. Work stuff out. Yo, yo, ma. You cellist? You cellist? That's what I'm going to say to him next time I yeah. see him. Look at this. Look at this. I what can't believe you've never seen this show. This guy's in the hotel lobby right now. No. <laughs> yeah. He but, just pulled up on on uh, on one of those hydraulic cars. They do your mama jokes. No, they don't. That's what the show is. It's your, You're shitting me right now. I, Sal, I swear to God, we're going to watch it. I don't care if we get flagged. We'll put it on Yo Mama. We, the soundboard we, cut out. We lost 20 minutes. Yeah, we, we, we recorded 20 minutes and the board cut out and it's, it's gone forever. Let me just tell the cliff notes of the 20 minutes you guys will never hear. Just put it on pause. We pretty much discovered that uh, I've been saying Wilmer Valderrama and it's Will it's it's Wilner. No, it's Wilmer. You've been saying Wilder. It's Wilmer. We f- we also found out, we kind of came to the conclusion that Wilma is a, is a mostly Dominican Latina name. So Wilma Flintstone and the Flintstones in general are Dominican. Dominican. Uh, um, um, we also dis- uh, I also told you that the guy who's giving me my COVID test, who's my COVID officer on the set of Backyard Borrowers, who's been administering the COVID test for the last three months, is in fact the actor. I'm not saying he looks like him. I'm saying he physically in the flesh, the same DNA, is the human being that played Pugsley Adams in the movie Adams Family Values, is my COVID officer now. And also my entertainment lawyer is Jeff Cohen, a.k.a. Chunk from The Goonies. I'm surrounded by child actors. And and um, uh, what what's what's what else? What what's one more thing I'm missing from those twenty minutes? Um, one of the kids from the Sandlot met me backstage at one of my shows one time because we were talking about childhood actors. And uh, within thirty seconds of meeting me, he asked me how much I make. He wanted all my financials. He Got wanted it. all my financials. Oh, and African Americans are the carry-ons of the airline industry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because once you start carrying on, you never go back because yes. it's just too it's so, too too good because it's convenient because we, we checked the bag. We were in LA and I checked out and I waited forty five minutes uh, you know, and they put the little bag on it that says your preferential. Yeah. Tag. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You come out dead last. Dead last. I feel like a failure every time I check a bag and it kind of always sets me off for a little bit of depression, but sometimes you gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to, actually, actually, no. You know what? I'm going to take that back. I don't want to do it anymore. I will go away. You could tell me I have to go away for a year. I would put a carry on. I would never Just check it away. Bit. I'll find, I'll continuously wash my clothes. I'm, I got the same shoes on the same, I've been wearing the same pants and shoes almost every episode of this Backyard Bar War show. Really? Thursdays, yeah, 10.30, no one, True TV. That's it. No one ever really is. Followed after 10 p.m., right after an episode of Impractical Jokers, Thursdays, 10 p.m. on True TV. Uh, Thursdays, th- 11 a.m., Hey, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Thursdays are for the babes. It's B-Day for the babes. That's right. And and I think True has even been saying stuff like, hey, it's babe night or yes, something like True that. Yes, True TV has been tweeting, hey, it's babe night and it's for the babes and everything's for the babes. Which is so, fun, but be careful. That's RIP. Okay. That is RIP. And you will potentially, <laughs> if you keep pushing it, you will get a call from Jeff Cohen, a.k.a. Chunk from the Goonies. <laughs> okay, let's go. This is Yo Mama, Will De Valderrama, who's either in the basement, who's in the, in the lobby of the hotel right now or on the pool. It's not Yo Mama. Oh, it's sorry. Yo Mama. <laughs> Yo Mama. No, did it be great to like, Yo, Yo Mama is so fat. <laughs> 
Look at I this. cannot believe what I am watching. I can't believe you didn't see this TV show. Him, out of all people, it seems like why him? I don't know why. I watched every episode. I used to I watch every this. episode of this after school. Oh, it's like the first roast battles. This is so fake. I mean, hold on. Pause this one sec, Pimpy. This is hysterical. They're clearly in, on a set. That yeah. makes it look like they're in like a parking garage in a building. I guess they want it to look a little urban. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're in this like parking garage, but it's clearly lit up. It's fake. And there's a crowd that kind of just formed. I wonder if this came out like after Eight Mile. There's a probably. crowd that there's a crowd that happened to form. You could tell they're all like and, and Hey, what's up? I'm coming to do stand up. ChrisDcomedy.com. We just put on sale the Dania Improv in Dania, Florida, right near the Miami area. Uh, September 17th and 18th, Zanies Nashville, October 15th to 17th, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, August 18th to the 21st. We just opened up some more seats, um, so go get those tickets. And then I got a bunch of other dates towards the end of the year. ChrisDComedy.com. I like guys. <laughs> and all right, we're finally on the road. My dates are come out soon, but I got tour dates from the guys and I, the Impractical Jokers tour. Um, and I'll just name some cities. You go to the tenderloins.com for tickets. Phoenix, San Diego, Sacramento, Minneapolis, Green Bay, Detroit, Milwaukee, Kansas City, Sioux Falls, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Chicago, uh, Boston, Syracuse, Newark, Elmont, New York, uh, the New Islanders uh, place, Woo. Boise, Portland, Seattle, Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, Nashville, Atlanta, Niagara Falls, Albany, Wilkes-Barre, uh, Salt Lake, Las Vegas, St. Louis, Oklahoma City, Fort Worth, Costa Mesa, Denver, Lincoln, etc. So all will come to you and more dates will be announced at tenderloins.com uh, for tickets. And even the jokes are like clearly like stock jokes. He said, your mom is so stupid she tripped over a cordless phone. It's like, that's, yeah, you didn't not, think of that. coming at it real. No. You really throw, start throwing on your mama jokes in a, in a parking garage somewhere. You're getting a cap in your ass. <laughs> also, the, the choice to host the Yo, Yo, Yo Mama show of Will de Valderrama is so ridiculous. Yeah. Why would you have him do it? But there was a time where he was in all the papers, like hanging out at the nightclubs and stuff. Maybe he was just like the hot. Now, news. guess what year this started? 2004. Six. 2006. Wow, so this is only 15 years ago? How many seasons did it run? Yo, mama. Uh, let me see. <laughs> At least four. By the way, this is a clip of the best of MTV's Yo, mama. And it led off with your mama so bad, dumb she tripped over a cordless, cordless phone. phone. Yeah. Well, I know that's, um. That, yeah, yo, mama. I, I Dude, I, literally, as soon as I saw him, as soon as I, I when I see Will de Valderrama, which I just did 20 minutes ago. Who is it? Will de Valderrama. <laughs> yep, yep. No, that's right, right? Wilmer. Wilmer. I think you said Vilda Valderrama. No, <laughs> Vilda, Vilda. Wow, now it's really messed me up. Now I would say Vilda Valderrama. Vilda Valderrama. <laughs> Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. You know that song by Delta Funky Homo Sapien? No. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. What's his name? The Homo Sapien? Uh, oh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. That's a funny ass name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a bunch of hits. Del he produces. I think he might have been in, in, in the Gorillas. Dill the Funky Hope. No, no, Dill. <laughs> Dill. <laughs> Dill the Funky Pickle. Only two seasons of the show, by the way. Really? Well, I wonder what happened. Jeez. They ran out. No, no, nothing against Wilmer, but <laughs> well, yeah, Wilmer. Wilmer used to, Wilmer used to, he, this guy's a handsome fellow with a lot of money and a nice track record. And he looked gorgeous downstairs. He had on I mean, three $400 pair of khakis. Yeah. He had on a nice jacket. He was with Dylan McDermott, uh, the actor Dylan McDermott. Who Dylan McDermott, one of those guys, instantly recognizable, long career, illustrious even, uh, famous, talented. I always like either confuse him with someone else or forget what he's in. I couldn't tell you one thing Dylan McDermott's in, but I've seen him in everything. But I can't tell you what that one thing is. name is like... I don't know why I have trouble committing him and what he does to my memory. I clearly know who he is. Dylan McDermott recently is more famous for that Netflix show that takes place like in the 60s, but it's about like a male escort service. And in the, I will love the show, but out of, no, I mean, out of nowhere in the first episode, there's just a scene with full gay anal sex, like out of nowhere, which people were it, like, "Whoa, it, that's it, a it lot." Starts off like that. Well, it's like in the first episode. That's the tone. It says American Horror Story, Law and Order. American Horror Story, Law no, and Order. Definitely more than that. He's he plays a mob boss in Law. Stuff. No, he's been in there. Him and Jerry O'Connell have been in everything, and it's almost impossible. If you can tell apart Dylan McDermott and Jerry O'Connell, you're like, you must be in Mensa. <laughs> there's, no, there's another guy like Dylan McDermott. Dylan, Dermot, D Dermot Mulrooney. That's Dermot I, Mulrooney. I confuse Dylan McDermott and Dermot Mulrooney like Bill Paxton now, and Bill Pullman. Now, who's Dermot? Now, which one's alive, Bill Paxton or Bill Pullman? 
Who I passed? I don't know. It's a sad story either it's way. It's a sad story either way. I feel like Bill Pullman passed away. Bill Pullman versus Bill. Bill, Bill okay. Bill Paxton, Who was in, was Twister? in Twister? Bill Pullman or Bill Paxton? Paxton. And he was in Independence. No, Bill Pullman was in Independence Day. Bill he Paxton is, is the one who passed speech. away then. The guy from Twister. Yeah. Yeah. With, with Helen the, Hunt. With a cow. Yeah. One by. of the best movies of all time. I haven't seen it since then. You've does never it, seen Twister more than once? Since then. Yeah, does it hold up? Oh, my God, of course. How often are you watching Twister? I, I Here's the thing. I watched, because I watched Twister, I what is this, Dylan McDermott versus Dermot, or Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney. This is an SNL bit. So it's so. a thing. Then it's a thing. It's a pop culture thing. Okay, I know which one's Dylan McDermott, How though. That? How about that? That Dermot Mulroney, that's not even who I was thought that Dermot Mulroney was. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably really funny, actually. Dermot Mulroney. But our fans did write in. They wanted you to address uh, how Chris says uh, umbilical cord. They say I said, they were saying I said imb- umbilical cord wrong. How'd you say it? How did I say in it? Umbilical cord is how you said it? I think you said umbilical. Unbiblical? You didn't say unbiblical. No, but they're saying in the show, <laughs> in the show we were getting lit. I was getting lit up because they were saying that I was saying it wrong, but I don't know how I was actually saying it. Umbilical, no? Im- um, it's not um. Is it um or m? It- I thought it was imbib- the umbilical cord. Here's one of my guesses. You. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm. Tr- I'll try. I'll sound out the letters of what I'm trying to say. Right. Umbilical cord. U M. B I L I C A L. Umbilical. Umbilical. It's not that, though. But it's close. What is it then? Oh, you said it right. How do you spell it, though? U M B I L I C A L. You said it right. I I spelled it right. So what was I saying last week then? I have no idea. They were trashing him. Umbilical. I thought it was. um, um, I was saying um, umbiblical. um, I I was saying the umbiblical chord. No, that's totally wrong. That's wrong. Speaking of biblical. You know, if they still, I didn't have one in this hotel because I always look. Yeah. Do they put Bibles in the hotels anymore? And, and who started that and why? I don't know where it Because it, it's Christian. It's always the, the, the Holy Bible. So it's like. If, if you're a Jew, Jewish person or a Muslim person, that's not my anyone book. Anyone but a Catholic or a Christian, I suppose. So like, who, who, who signed, who inked the deal with. The hospitality industry saying that we'll throw a Bible in the right, in the right pocket of the in the, in the, in the right nightstand. Do you th- also who? It's such an antiquated thing. At least I believe. Like who's arriving to the hotel and being like, "I'm going to leave my Bible at home because I know there's a Bible there." So when I and when I get and when I check in, I'm just I'm just thumbing through Corinthians like nobody's biz. Well, I'll tell you this. There's two things. One first thing is. My mother's very religious woman, devout Catholic. Every time we would go to Hershey, Pennsylvania, we say at this hotel, the Bird in Hand. We would go there all the time. The Bird in Hand? Bird in Hand. Like okay. a Bird in Hand restaurant. Great buffet. Great breakfast buffet. Um, but we would always stay there, and it's kind of like on like a you know farm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But every morning I'd wake up, she'd be out in the little rocking chair reading passages of the Bible. So I, that so she would do that. So that's, that's for customer who would do that. First time I've ever heard that in my entire life. That's ever. what she would do. Sound off in the comments. Shout out Bibles. Shout out Bibles. Shout out hotels. Shout out convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out s- Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Lancaster. That's the, ho- the Amish. 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 Langhorn, Sesame Place. Sesame Place. Yeah. Which I got lost at when I was a little kid, and they had to come over the loudspeaker and tell me exactly where to meet. Really? Yeah, because I I had my grandfather was watching me and my cousin, and we had come down a slide, and we were supposed to go, let's say, to the right where the exit was, but we went the other way, yeah. and, and then you know you start walking around, and then it gets comical. But my thing is, is that maybe the Vatican is in cahoots with the hotel industry. Maybe a, maybe the Pope owns a portion of Hilton's or something like that. Mm. So you guys want a fact f- about it? Yeah. Uh, a, um, a company named Gideon International in 1899, three of their salesmen met in a hotel room and the idea hit them to distribute to hotels. And by 1908, that was their business. Oh, so they were selling them to the hotels. Yeah. So it's been 125 years and we're still doing it? Well, now it's being phased out. But the new thing hotels are doing is that they're also phasing, they're phasing out providing Bibles, and they're phasing out the room number 420. 
<laughs> God, You're shitting what me. a stupid society well, we live in. There is also no floor thirteens in any hotel. Which is, I mean, how ridiculous is that? It is ridiculous. There's no thirteenth floor here in this hotel. Yeah, it well, will always it doesn't go up to thirteen. But in most hotels, when there or oh, buildings, when there is a thirteen, it's not on there. I rarely see a thirteen. Same with me. I rarely, rarely, rarely see it. That's so interesting with the Bible thing. That it's, it's all business, though. It's all marketing. That, well, what about the thirteen? I mean, who's the guy that's like not my elevator company? Yeah, Wait, that's that's dangerous. Yeah. Also, yeah. the people on fourteen know they're on thirteen, right? You have to. I mean, like, what am I, an idiot? You're gonna put me on fourteen? It's thirteen. Yeah, it's a big cover up. I'd rather be up front with me. Don't put me on fourteen, and I go there, and there's all sorts of haunted it's shit all, going all on. Stupid. But are you a big superstitions person? No. But like then again, who Super, is? is? But superstitions. If you if you're su- it's an it's it's a weird thing because if you're superstitious and religious, then the Bible says superstitions aren't real and don't believe in them. And if you are superstitious, you're like that's from the devil. So you really technically can't be religious and superstitious. But so many of my most superstitious friends and family are religious. It's strange. That sounded like a, literally a, a riddle. <laughs> Chrissy Riddles <laughs> on the Riddler. Superstitious and religious. Also I got a Riddler a nice shirt. Show. I look like the Riddler right yeah. now. You're, I'm a trendy Riddler. I love your color story today. Yeah. Kuna Flex yeah. results. That is a nice, uh, that's a really nice color on that top. Top. You know what I said the other day? I swear to God. I was, uh, I was, <laughs> so my girlfriend comes out and she was like, she was like, uh, oh, what should I wear to this thing? And I said, I said this. I said, what about that little number you had on? Uh, little number. I said, I referred to an outfit she had, had on as a number. Little number. A little number that you had on. And I, as I said, what about that little number? I laughed like pimp. Like I went, ha! <laughs> what did she say? And what I laughed so freaking hard. I'm like, who am I turning into? That little number. Put on that little number. Little number. I've never said that in my life. That's like what they did in the, like the 1920s. 19, well, that's what I was talking. She was yesterday. We were at the show yesterday. She goes, um, you were on stage or whatever. And then I go, um, I go, we got drinks. And I didn't have like any, uh, you know, anything to tip. And cash was paying the card. And I said, I said, you got some scratch on you so I could give the. <laughs> I go, you got some. <laughs> and then she said, what did you just say? I said, you got some scratch so I could throw to this bartender. And she was like, what the? Scratch. I where said, did scratch come from? Scratch is a good word. Oh, I like scratch. Scottol is what we Scott call all. it. Yeah, Scottol. Little Scottol. Which man. is from es- Escarol. Is that really what it's from? Escarol and beans. Greens. Green. Wow. Cap- I never Cap- knew that. Yeah. You ready for scratch? Yeah. Uh, it's It came from the starting line of a race, which is scratch in the ground. But but how does that mean money? I have no idea. You know idea. what I mean? Maybe if you cross the line first and won like a horse race or something, you won money, you won scratch. <clears throat> scratch. Let's see. Get I some scratch. Know. I don't know. I don't Fish know. Got all cheddar, cheddder, cabbage. Oh, Which? actually, it says for money. Twentieth uh, century complete mystery. No one understands the context. Wow. <laughs> okay. Thanks, internet. Nothing yeah. showed back Freaking up. Freaking destroyed us. I mean. All right, Squarespace, everybody. You know me. I'm Chrissy Squarespace. Sal's on vacation, but you know he's Sally Squarespace. Homeless Pimp actually used Squarespace to make our websites. Yep. So we do Squarespace, right, Pimpy? We oh, love yeah. it. Love it's Squarespace. All in one platform, e commerce, domains, marketing tools. They got a bunch of stuff. You build your website with Squarespace, they make it very easy, very simple. A freaking dumb dumb can do, use Squarespace. It's the best, and we're gonna give you we're gonna give you guys a nice 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 discount here at Hey Babe. All you gotta do is go to squarespace.com slash Hey Babe for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Hey Babe, and you're gonna save ten percent off your first purchase or of a website domain. So they didn't, even, dude. They're not even making you do it. They're saying, dude, go to squarespace.com slash hey babe for the free trial. And if you like it and you're ready to launch, use the promo code hey babe. You get 10% off. Build your website. Send us your websites. We'll probably think it's viruses and not open them, but maybe we will. And maybe it'll be a virus and maybe it won't. But to be honest with you, if I'm going to get a virus, I want to get one from Squarespace. I have AIDS. Oh my God. <laughs> upstart. You guys ready for a little upstart? If you're carrying a credit balance each month, which I know a lot of us are, which I know I am, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt. Which debt, it was always such a hard word, debt, because it's D-E-B-T. So it's, it's debt, but it's really debt. The B is silent, which is some <laughs> things are stupid in the American language. But what's also even stupider or more stupid, I don't know, is carrying debt. 
And Upstart's going to help you not carry that debt. It's the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. So I used to have to go to the guys on the street corner and get my loans paid for in all cash. And then they threatened to break my legs and kill my family if I didn't give if I didn't give them their money back with some juice on top of it. But now I don't because of Upstart, dude. Upstart has genuinely saved my life because I'm a degenerate piece of garbage and I'm always in debt. And now because of Upstart, my legs won't get broken by the Gambino crime family. So here's how you can get a nice discount with Upstart. Go to upstart.com slash hey babe. That's upstart.com slash hey babe, okay? Do not forget to let them know that we sent you with that URL, upstart.com slash hey babe. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. I legally have to say that because if I don't say that, then the U.S. government will come after me and break my legs financially. (laughs) Maybe not physically, but to be honest with you, if it was between the U.S. government coming after me and the Gambino crime family, I'd pick the Gambino crime family because I can still be funny with a limp. But if you take all my money away and I got to go back to driving a Toyota, I'm screwed. So go to (laughs) upstart.com slash hey babe. Babe, I got to be honest. I've been in L.A. now a lot over the last few months. I just, L.A. is all about their love detoxing and cleansing. And I think that that's what I'd like to do for now temporarily with this city. I'd like to detox and cleanse from it. I got, I would say, borderline annihilated drunk last night. And you didn't know that I was drunk, which is a little scary to me because I was, I couldn't drive. Homeless pimp had to drive the car home. I did not. I could not get behind the wheel. But I was, but I think I got so drunk. I never really see you drunk like that. It's very rare. Well, I'll tell you what happens. A lot of times people get there, they go drunk, they cause a scene. I went, got back to the hotel last night, got drunk, was in bed, ready to go to bed, had just eaten keto, had felt great. I ordered Domino's. Banana pepper pizza, cheesy bread, and a diet Dr. Pepper. And I woke up this morning, you know, really feeling bad about myself and then finished the last two slices of pizza that I saved from the night before because I was like, let me not be terrible. How did you? Okay, this is the thing. You ordered it. Was You, you were in bed already? Yeah. And now I'm sitting like this. This is happening to you. I'm sitting like this, and I just feel my back, my fat crumpling together. Oh, yeah. That's which a- I, I didn't feel that two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, Now yeah, I feel yeah. it crumpling together. It's like a five-pound variant. Do, see, like, do why, do, why do you start to feel your, bat, your back fat crumpling in literally five-pound variants? Yeah. Right? I don't know. That's where, our, that's where we live. We, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you were already in bed. Then you had to call. Then you had to stay awake. Well, I... It was in one, bed waiting for it to come. I was... Did you eat it in bed? Yes. I had two beds. I ate it on the bed I wasn't using. <laughs> and I actually have it still on... Unless the cleaning people came and cleaned it up. It, those boxes are still on that bed. <laughs> I literally... That sounded like a weird flex. <laughs> yeah. I got a two beds. I have two beds. I eat in one bed. I it, sleep in the other. Yeah. I literally, I w- I fell asleep, after I ordered it, I fell asleep and then was awoken by the delivery guy <laughs> calling me to say, food in the lobby. <laughs> I was also one floor above you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pimp was one floor above me and you had no idea the debauchery. But hey, it's not worse than Joe DeRosa. Joe DeRosa called me yesterday. Listen and to this, folks. Joe, you know Joe DeRosa of the Joe, Taste Buds podcast? Yeah, Joe DeRosa, Joe De- yeah, well, well, look, he's probably sleeping. Joe DeRosa called me this morning. I said, how was your night last night? I said, well, I, you know, ate, there's a box of Domino's pizza in the bed next to me. I, you know, I had sex with it. So I was like, it's kind of a weird night. I feel guilty. So he was like, it ain't worse than me. He said, I was hanging out at the Stan Comedy Club, chilling with my friends. He goes, and then my other friend owns a bar. He was like, in the bar, she opened it up for us at like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. He said, and then we were drinking there till 6 o'clock in the morning, and I fell asleep in a booth in the bar, and he was calling me, which was 10.45 a.m. New York time, calling me in his walk home from the bar that he was sleeping at to his to his uh, uh, apartment in New York, and he was had me on. He put me on hold for a second so he could order Burger King delivery oh. to his apartment. Joe. I was like, Joe, He's, you're, it's this a call for help. Yeah, I was like, I was like, Joe, it's your. What are you doing? I mean, he should be out here in L.A. with us. He should have been the first guest on Hey Babe, but instead he's sleeping in boots That's and bars, sick. eating whoppers. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad when you fall asleep in a in a business. You ever fall asleep in? So, yeah, yeah well, I have. <laughs> no, but something like that. you fall asleep because you used to run a bar. You ever fall asleep in the bar you used to own? Yeah, yeah. Like fully in the bar, you're asleep. You woke up in the morning there. Oh um, no, I mean I stayed through the night, like partying. Right, that's one thing. Oh, but I'm talking about okay. you fully. He went to bed for the night in yeah. the booth. I went to bed and they got me up and took. I, one time I got so drunk when the Steelers uh, made this uh, Super Bowl. Uh, everybody wanted to buy me shots. I'm a Steelers fan, and I was doing them. And I, then I said, "Danielle Steel? 
What's that? Danielle Steele? Yeah, Danielle Steele. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Steele fan. Danielle Steele is uh, fan. Yeah, she's a real paper. She's an author, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that. Have you ever read a romantic novel? <laughs> have you ever read one where they have, like, actual, like, they describe, like, intimate romance, like, in it? Like, like, the, the, like the ones that, like, women read, and that's their, like. Like a Fifty Shades of Grey? Well, I would. Isn't that like something really progressive? That's like but you remember the, like the ones with like the like Fabio on the cover, like those, well, like ro- a Romeo and like, Juliet, like a romance novel, like a like a classic no. romance novel. You, no, Never. but it's. But you, you you ever seen like the like the excerpts? Yeah. Of, of like the of the prose of like the of the of the yeah. stories where they're just like he pressed his you know hand firmly against her buttocks. Yeah, buttocks. It's supposed to be like sexy. Yeah. Once you say buttocks to me, I'm out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I don't like when people do that. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever been around someone who doesn't really know how to speak yeah. in a way that is called for when that yeah. time is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> People that that yeah, let's just avoid it. You know what? My, <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? You can see that story in the Patreon. <laughs> uh, do, do you know? Do you know what my dad says all the time? That is just like I, don't, I mean, it's just a simple thing. But like, if you were saying, if you were like in a hotel or a restaurant, and you had to, and you had to pee. And you didn't know where the room... What would you say to a worker there? What would you say? Would you say, where is the... Oh, excuse me. Um, can you direct me to the restroom? To the restroom. Yeah. My dad always says, can you direct me to the men's room? He always just says the men's okay, room. I thought you were going to say... He says, can you tell me, show me where the toilet is? Which is a hundred times worse. No, he always just men's says, do you have a men's bad. room? But yeah. I always just thought it was weird... I don't know. I just, he's the only person I ever said that says, can you take, where's the men's room? Do you have a men's room, a men's room, a men's room? I would just say, I mean, can't you just say bathroom? Bathroom or restroom, yeah. Yeah. So you don't think there's a problem with saying, where's the men's room? No, I thought you were going to say toilet or shit or something like that. It's not as common to ask for where's In the Europe, men's room. they just call it the toilet. Well, you do have a toilet. It's on the signs. It's on everything. They just say, where's the toilet? Which is gross. They call, like, I guess the room itself becomes the toilet. But they're really just calling it the toilet. I know. I, I'm well, like, they call it the washroom in England. The washroom has the toilet in it. Well, the washroom, I, I, I don't mind. Yeah, but you're not washing. You're not. But it doesn't make sense to me because if I'm going to the washroom, Wash what am I want? Yeah, but it, you tell me there's a washroom. If right. I never been to Shower. England, I said, you go wash him. I said, oh, he's going to go in there and take a bath. Water closet. But if, if, if I don't know anything and you say you're going into this public stall and I'm going into your washroom, I'm like, what, is he going to wash yourself with right. the toilet water? Right. What are you a f- hippo yeah right right <laughs> well, water water closet is like a water closet it's pretty innocuous the water closet but again i don't understand what that means either yeah. what's a water closet but i would be embarrassed embarrassed as hell to go downstairs and be like hey <laughs> i don't think i could do it go downstairs and be like uh, can you tell me where the toilet where's is? the toilet yeah i just need to run do it's you too crude but do you say do you say like if you have to go like like you know in public whatever w- would you say like to the People, would you say I got to go pee or would you say I just got to go to the bathroom? I always, if I have to pee, if I say to you I have to go to the bathroom, it's because I have to go take a poop. But if I say I got to go pee, it's because right. I'm, I'm going if to I'm pee. If I'm talking to you, I would just say the real thing, but I would never just address out loud like I got to go take a pee. You know what I say a lot now? Right. A lot now? I guess just because, you know, the kids. I, I'll say like in public to like a meeting with like agents, like let me go pee pee. <laughs> I said let me go pee pee, but I'm being dead serious. I got like, Let me go pee pee. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go, let me go do a pee pee deeps. Pee pee deeps. When we sold the, the, the television show in Practical Jokers, we went out and we filmed on our own, like four or five little bits on our cell phones and one of the bits they weren't this was the only one that was like toilet humor but we would just we walked into businesses and said excuse me do you you know where the bathroom is and they'd be like all right and we just had to say oh because i gotta do a peeps or i gotta do a poops right and uh it was it was like 10 years ago it was the first we were laughing at that we almost just did a video of it just for the internet and we did it and we couldn't say it serious without laughing at people's faces right and so it became funny and so we put it in the tape and it was because of that one because the other ones we didn't laugh it was because of that bit especially me i was like oh, oh because i just i gotta go and i couldn't get it out and i would start laughing we left it in and they really loved that and that's when we were like oh we should just leave in us laughing and not being able to do it sure that's it, the whole show it definitely it came from that b- bit we call peeps and poops peeps and poops that because because the thing but then it, people think that don't watch the show think this shit the whole show is just like that silly kind of stuff but it's like so so different but that was the one i couldn't say it i could not say it to these people at these retail stores you couldn't say peeps or poops or either either i just i couldn't i was like because i gotta 
and I just <laughs> couldn't say it. And then Cat Joe went and he just like right in their face. He's like, "Yeah, I gotta take a poops. I, I gotta, take, I gotta poops. take a wicked poops so right in their face. Right, just like a little smirk, maybe. And we're yeah. like, oh, we should just leave it in if we fu- if we mess up or if we laugh or whatever. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. Like, you think you go downstairs right now? Walk up to the front desk. There's probably a. World of Alderama, guy or yeah, like, a, or even if it's worse, even if it's like a, a a woman down there, and you go, excuse me, I have to take a poops. Do you know where the bathroom is? I have to take a poops. I think if like you were making me do it, <laughs> yeah. I, like I would be mortified. I, I I couldn't do it now even at all. If you like made me do it and you said I can have any alliteration of it, I would probably just for me, I'd go, I I, I got to go take a poopy doopy. That's what I would say, just to like make it really cute. No, you can't do that though. And That's, I say poops. You're getting out of it then. Poopy Doopy's funny too, but then it's like you are recognizing that you're being silly and calling it out. But if you just tell the girl downstairs, uh, do you know where the bathroom is? And then the, the funny part is she says right over there. And then, then you go, thank you, because I have to do poops. <laughs> <laughs> and then just look at her. And just look at her and walk away. I would love it if we're done with this. We go downstairs. You have a lav mic? Yeah. <laughs> I love we finish this. We throw a lav on you, go right downstairs, and we just he just stands on the side and you do it. We put it up. Let's Should we do it. that? Yeah. Okay, fine. I guess it's how we're ending the episode. Um, but so. you can't smile. You gotta just be like, thank you, because I have to do poops now. Uh, and it yeah. has to be a woman. I have to do poops. Yeah. Okay. You think you can do it without laughing? Oh my god. You get nervous. Right? I, yeah, I don't know. You get nervous now, right? Yeah. This is what <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not fun. Everyone thinks it's fun. What's the I, most nervous you've been for one of these bits? Oh, so nervous. Like, that's just a line. Now, though, you don't understand. That's nothing. That's embarrassing. But when they when you say something that's edgy, because we know that you don't, we would never say that. You don't want to say it. To any, I mean, it's like, I, I don't I don't explain it to you, but it's like, it's a... Uh, the stakes are high now. Anxiety, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, because because in the 20 minutes that were cut out, another thing that we forgot to say uh, also is that we found out that in some cultures, in American culture, you need to look me in the eye when I shake your hand. In the Japanese culture, you do not look, you do not look me in the eye. It's very disrespectful to look me in the eye when you're shaking my hand. What is that about? We found out that it was in many, many cultures. Actually, many, many cultures. Which doesn't make any sense. So it's disrespectful to look in the eye when you're saying hello and when you're speaking to the person. So then that means, when do you look at them? <laughs> so my question, though, is is if you make me do this bit, this poopy doopy bit, this poop bit, I got to take a poopy, I got to do, poop, do, yeah, do a poops. Yeah, I got to do a poops. What if the, what if ta- the person is... Take a poops is even funny. What if the worker down there is Japanese? Do I look them in the eye when I say that? Or look, do I... No, you look, You had to make full eye contact. But that's disrespectful in their culture. Straight in. Yeah, but I think that here at the hotel, they expect people to look at them. Got it. Okay. I think okay. Poops. Well, I, but if I'm saying hello to you and I'm like, hey, how you doing? How's everything? Good. How's the wife and kids? Good. Good. Where are you going to? All right. Everything good? Hey, you better be. Oh, you go. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Take it easy. And then I walk away. When am I looking at you? It's disrespectful to look at you. I think that in the Asian culture, they have to give you the okay. They have to say something, some type of signal that says you can look at me now. Yeah, but, uh, but, we're, but let's say we're, but let's say the both of us that goes for though. So you're not looking at me. I'm not looking at you. And then one of us has to tell the other person, you can look at me now? So what if I tell you you can look at me now and you're like, fine, but you can't look at me yet? Can't look at me yet? I don't I kind of think about it. Can we like pull up maybe some like Japanese podcasts that are just like us? Like, are they looking at each other is in it, the eye? Is that maybe this is a formal practice? Like if you don't know the person? I, or, or maybe if it's if it's a person of authority, like a, you know, an officer it's or so someone, at, someone in a position of authority at a company or I don't know whatever I don't know because these cultures are so weird where it's like not we are different than ours where it's like you can't look them in the eye but then in other cult also too in America if you're eating we have some weird this is this is how to understand Japanese culture eye contact in Japan hi it's it's Santi Radio okay so uh, today's topic is eye contact in Japan yes the Japanese people have you, you spelled Japan wrong? Japanese you spelled it JPN. Don't look at you directly. It is weird he didn't abbreviate it in any other well, word. Tonight, it's also like just put the A. After you're watching this video, it's a couple more understand. letters. It's not like Perfectly. it didn't say, you didn't say that much. Why? It's like I was in a rush. And how yeah. you should do when you talk to Japanese people. What should you expect? All right. So, uh, first of all, let me share you one comment I got from my subscriber. Is that a Uniqlo it's jacket, you think? Mary Rose Love you, Uniqlo. Apoyon. <laughs> Hi, Apoyon. <laughs> Apoyon says, uh, here is a topic that <laughs> you want to like talk one. about. Why Japanese guys don't look at you when you talk to them? They either look to another direction or look to their feet while talking to you. In my country, it, is, it means that they're not interested in talking to you, they're lying, or they're mm. not sincere. 
Yeah, when, can you just... I mean, I want to look away just from disgust. Yeah, yeah, just I'm like, I'm like, you need to. Uh, is it also in Japanese cultures going on and on and on? I'm missing the point. Uh, here's, here's something. In my culture, it is very disrespectful to nail a point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get to the point quickly is very disrespectful. I like the freeze frame on his face too. Here's something interesting I just looked up while you were talking about pooping. Um, what do you think the proper, the best etiquette is? There's two schools of thought being argued here. One is like standing up, squatting slightly. And then the other one is sitting with your knees higher than your hips, leaning forward with your elbows on your knees. For how to do a poopy doopy? No, the most efficient poops. Oh, I think it's gotta be squatty potty way, right? Yeah, that's the way because that's like that's what I keep hearing about. Standing up, standing. Well, they're saying if you stand and squat slightly, that your it the lane of traffic is just a straight shot. Okay. Well, I I've never know. done anything but just sit down. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing too. Like, you know, like my daughter is th- <laughs> is 3 weeks old and you know, it, she strains to poop and the doctor was like, "Yeah, because the doctor the pediatrician posed a question to me. This was last week. I say I say, you know, she's always strained to poop. She goes, "Well, have you ever have you ever laid down on your back and tried to poop?" I said, "No." <laughs> she said, "Well, that's what she's doing." She said, "You have all the gravity on your side. She can't sit up." She has no body control. So she's trying to push out a poop without the, without the assistance of gravity at all. You strain that. She's like, go home. She's like, she's like think if you want to put yourself in your daughter's shoes, she said to me and Jazz, she was like, go lay on, lay on the floor tonight and see if you can push your poop out. And you'll see it's very difficult. But she's like, your daughter's fine. I never thought fine. of that. Yeah, I never thought of that either. You think you could do it? I don't think I could do it. You think you, 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 think you just shit just standing straight up? <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Just like standing straight up, just straight, fully up. Yeah, does it, that'll work, right? You just it just will drop out. I. That's kind of funny. Like if you're on the go. Yeah, yeah you just <laughs> go like, do it. Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine like everything existed in our world except clothes. And and, wow. and, 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 and and so like and, and then and then and then like if like people just went to the restroom on the go. Like they didn't break stride. <laughs> <laughs> like just when they had to go, they go. If like they're walking, yeah. Like they're out, if they're standing and talking. Well, like- <laughs> it is kind of one of those things where it's like, what is I understand I understand diapers are messy, but what is really what are the major negatives of having an adult diaper? Like if I, if they can make diapers that like it contains it in a place, it the smell will never come out. No. Other than the mess, like but you can just there's well, got to be some what well, you say other than the mess, but the mess is like the only thing. But if it saves I guess yeah. I mean homes would be cheaper. Bathrooms are a ton of money. <laughs> That's where people plunk down a lot of the money. Money, Kitchens right? And bathrooms. It's a brand new bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. I was. Just, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I mean, if I, you know, obviously there's people that have to do it. Yeah, they got no choice. They have to do it. Now, I just pulled up a fact that says within the next five years, adult diaper sales will surpass baby diaper sales. It why says is, like by nearly double. Now, why? Is why that? is that? I don't know. That's that doesn't sound right. I mean, there's yeah. Why is that? There's babies there coming babies? in every second. Yeah. Why would the maybe because they're elderly? Wait, we're multiplying at a rate quicker than we did X variable. Yes, ago, right. Like, uh, so like, there are way more young people than there are older people. I believe yes, but older people are living so long. Uh, okay, because I was gonna say, isn't that gonna catch up to the point where like it says twenty five million Americans wear diapers every day? Is that including babies? Uh, it's, this is saying uh, adults. Is that is that because older people are living longer? Wow. It's one of those things that's interesting too because I yeah, well, I guess maybe are they only are they saying that some toddlers are not wearing diapers anymore? Is that like a diaper alternative? Cuz I always cuz my you, kids always in diapers. For Patreon content, would you wear a diaper and uh, 100% and just go? A 1000% I'd the, do it. To the bathroom. Yeah. I would do that for Patreon. I would do that. I, I, I'm you looking right the in the camera. I, I would do that for the Patreon when we make it, which is coming soon. I swear to God, it's coming soon. You would go to the bathroom in an adult diaper yes. on the Patreon? For the Patreon. Really? I do this for y'all. Really? I would do this oh. for the babes and babettes. Wait a minute. Would you do a show and on stage break in the diaper? For the highest level tier of the Patreon, yes. What would that cost? What level tier? I mean, what are we going to do? Tiers wise, we're going to do five, ten, twenty fives. It, I mean, I I, I think it's yeah. going to be a five dollar level and then just a five thousand dollar level. For <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for five G's, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, wh- how weird would that feel? That was- I had to piss myself. I told you that on the show. Why? No, did you tell on the sh- did you tell us that on Hey Babe? I think I might have. Did Pimped, you tell you that, Mike? That? Do you remember? No, I don't remember this. I no. think I did. They, they they fed me. It was in the afternoon. I had to go into an escape room. It was my punishment with like six people I never met before. And the, the idea was that as soon as the escape room started, the door locks for one hour. And as soon as the door locked, they wanted me to lit, for real piss my pants and then be locked in the room with six strangers for one hour after that. <laughs> So you had to immediately <laughs> piss your pants, though. Immediate. We got a nice new sponsor, Amazon Music. As soon as Jeff Bezos got back from riding his penis into outer space, he landed, he contacted the people at Hey Babe, and he said, I want Hey Babe listeners to get trials of Amazon Music, to uh, you binge-worthy podcast music, whatever you want. They have 10 million free podcast episodes to listen to, 10 million freebies to listen to. I'm telling you, there's no credit card or subscription required. You can even go hands-free with Alexa, okay? So you want to you be... You, you you don't even you don't even need to use your hands if you're if you're handless if you're out there with just nubs listening to hey babe you can literally download amazon music and be a part of this all you have to do all, what do they have to do pimpy all you have to do is go to amazon.com slash hey babe that's amazon.com slash hey babe to stream thousands of music stations and over 10 million podcast episodes for free Okay, it's free. Just go to Amazon.com slash Hey Babe. Start your free trial. It's the best thing to do. You're going to love it as much as I do. I mean, what are you people waiting for? Amazon.com slash Hey Babe. Every other, every other place can suck it. Amazon.com slash Hey Babe. Butcher Box. Listen, Butcher Box, it's one of those places they've been sending me stuff, and I got to be honest with you, I'm obsessed with it. The quality meats, they even got v, uh, vegetarian butcher boxes because Jazz doesn't eat meat um, except last night um, because she, you know, she's still, you know, she's, she's recovered. Cut that part out. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, listen, a butcher box, what it is is, is it's 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken. You mainly raise pork, wild-caught lobster tails, wild-caught Alaskan salmon. You know how hard it is to catch an Alaskan salmon? And butcher box are catching them in the wild. And sugar nitrate-free bacon, dude. Sugar nitrate-free bacon. No bacon, no sugar in my bacon. You, If you want to put a little bit of sugar on the bacon, you can. Butcher Box can't stop you, but it's coming packaged with no sugar and nitrates, which is dope. Now, Butcher Box wants to celebrate you this summer. That's what they want to do. So right now, Butcher Box is offering new members two free lobster tails, dude. I mean, why would you not attempt to, why would you not do this? They're giving you free lobster tails and free ribeyes in your first box. This. Do you know how much money that is that they're giving away to you? Free ribeyes and lobster tails? These people are insane, and that's why I love them. If you go to butcherbox.com slash heybabe, you'll get free lobster tails in, and ribeyes in your first box. All you got to do, you can only get this special deal. By the way, I oh, I'm sorry, I left that part out. You can only get the free lobster tails and the free ribeyes if you go to butcherbox.com slash heybabe. That's what you get. You get two five-ounce lobster tails and two 10-ounce ribeyes free in your first box if you go to butcherbox.com slash heybabe. So you got to put in the promo code heybabe. You can get free lobster tails, free ribeyes, and why don't you invite me, Sal, and Joe DeRosa and Homeless Pimp over for dinner if you got free lobster tails and free ribeyes, you fuckers. Butcherbox.com slash heybabe. And then I was nervous because I had to be able to piss on call. Which and you you piss once a week. I piss once a week. Truly, one, no, truly. How many times have you you've been? It's it's three o two in the afternoon. How how many times have you urinated today, if at all? I did urinate once today because I took a shower, and I like to urinate before I go into the shower. Little fun fact about myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than that, I probably won't urinate again. You don't urinate in the shower. I'm not saying I haven't in my life, but I oh, if I have to go and I'm in the shower, I'll hit the drain if I have to, I guess. I, can't, I, I don't think there's a shower I've taken where I haven't urinated in the shower. Oh, so that's just your, that's how you do it. I urinate yeah, in the shower. Why not just turn on the water, urinate in the bowl? Because I only feel the urge to urinate when the water starts to hit my naked body. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> my dad says urinate a lot too, but not as a joke. Not he'll, as a- no, no, he'll say like, I got to urinate. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, he says mendrum and urinate. That's the other word that I was thinking of. It was like, my dad says urinate. Speaking of urination, you know Japanese toilets? There's toilets in Japan right now where you urinate in them, and it will send 
your medical records to the doctor. I don't know if we've talked about that on Hey Baby before. Oh, I, don't think, I think I have heard of yeah, that. Yeah, it, it literally sends an email to your doctor that says what's going on, you're in high uric acid, you have gallstones, like whatever it is. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So you piss in the toilet. And, and it the, emails your doctor. They're called smart toilets. Wow. Yep. Yep. You, that's I'm I'm not making that up, right? Yeah, Pimp? I'm seeing a bunch of them. Yeah, you wow. smart. And they're only in the U.S. Uh, they're only in Japan. Or you could get them in the U.S. I'm sure you could get them here, but it looks like they're like ten grand. You want to do I it? Mean, the Patreon. I mean, we, I mean, if it, uh, we could, we could do a GoFundMe to yeah. buy a smart <laughs> to buy a smart toilet, and then every guest we have, every single guest we'd have, we'd have to check the urine. We'd have to check the urine. Yeah. We can. Li- we don't fun. care if you're vaccinated or not. We need to check your urine. urine a urine check for it'll any guest. It'll get emailed to whomever wants to be the Hey Babe resident physician. Yeah, we'll go we need we'll a get Hey Babe it. resident. We need. We need. If we're going to staff this thing, we need somebody from every field. We need a Hey Babe resident physician. We need a Hey Babe. Uh, 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 person to run the general store we need a hey babe um mail person we need a hey babe uh accountant uh well we have a hey babe accountant well who else do we Wait, need how funny would it be no joke though because because we were talking about making a build down a little studio what have you yeah but if we go fund me a smart toilet i have it installed in the in the, in the house in the studio and then any or in the next studio in the house and any guests we have we take their urine sample and we deliver it to the doctor, and then uh, and then we give that we read the results <laughs> <laughs> on the on the next. Uh, no matter who the guest is, we read their urine sample results. Yeah, and we on t- the next on the next. We start every and every single Hey Babe episode starts with our song that we have. Yes, followed immediately by the urine results of the previous guest. Yeah, yeah. that's what I do. What happened? <laughs> and we keep yeah. them on file, and every time they come back, we, we check we on them on file. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what if we help someone? What if we save someone's life? Oh yeah. What if we like, you know, say you got, oh, you got, you know, got to be careful. You got a high count. Well, that that I did everything when I was a physical therapist. I was giving the lady a neck massage, like because she was like had neck pain, whatever. And I was doing, and I was literally, I must have been a physical therapist for a week, maybe two weeks. And I was giving her a back of a neck massage, and there's it's called an occipital release. Under here, you have it's called the occipital bone part of your skull, and you put your fingers under it, and you do like a release. And for people who have like tension headaches in the back, if you just like subtly, just like through like you know like tension and traction, just like release, like pull on the little bones of their back over yeah. uh, back of their head. You know, they lay down. And I was doing it, and I was doing it, and I said, um, I said, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you have a bump in the back of your in the back of your head here. And she was like, really. I said, yeah, because I was doing the occipital release. I said, you should really get that checked out. Bumps on the occipital bone are very rare. I said, so you should, you know, really check that out. She goes, yeah, I'm sure it's nothing. It must be an ingrown hair. I said, maybe. I said, I'm just letting you know. Um, but there was like an urge inside of me to like one more time say to her without, again, being a two weekend therapist, right. which is like a little like, you know, I, what the hell do I know? I'm not, right. I don't know anything. I was like, I just don't feel like you just, just go look at it. Like, I was like, hey, like joking around. I was like, promise me you'll look at that. She goes, yeah. So then she doesn't come back for her next appointment, not the next appointment, not the next appointment. Finally asks my head guy, what happened to her? He goes, oh, she had to get brain surgery. She has a, she had a, found that she had a brain tumor. Holy I swear. Shit. I was like, wow. And then she finally came back, but I wasn't a therapist there anymore. And she had sent word to my boss like, hey, tell that physical therapist kid he saved my life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you it. saved someone's life. So, uh, supposedly. Wow. Yeah, because they had a brain tumor. I don't know if she might be dead now from a, something else. <laughs> she, from anything. Yeah, she yeah, she may have died in you a, could, in you a could, duck hunting she accident. She could have walked across the street and been hit by an occipital bone. Hit by the, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. She, so that that's the one and only time I saved someone's life. I saved a kid from drowning once. At the pool area in our in our apartment complex, as kids, right? I just saw him. We were, it was, the pool was crowded. Everyone was hanging around, jumping. It was very active, and he just walked into a part that was deeper than he could swim. And I just saw him going like this, but his head was under. And I just saw him going like this. Wow! And I was like looking at him. I was young. I was like a kid myself. I was maybe a few years older than him. And I'm just looking at him, and I'm looking at him, and he's just like. He can't move, swim, get up. He was just like going like that with his arms. And I was like, this looks good. So I swam over to him and I looked, I went under and I looked at him and I picked him up and he was literally like nearly passed out. And they, really? Yeah. And I called and the lifeguard jumped in and every, all the parents came over and we picked him and they put him on a thing and they were doing his stomach and he started spitting out all the water and everything. 
Now, yeah. now, what year is that? Like eighties, nineties? Uh, my guess, uh, it was probably uh, mid to late eighties. Because I would imagine in the late eighties, like that, probably at just a different time. Nobody even called nine one one. The pool probably just stayed open. It's just the kid was back in the pool in ten minutes. Nobody called nine one one. It was just that kid. Literally, might have been he back. Cried. In that pool. He was scared. Of the pair, everyone was shook. For sure, but at, you know, after he toweled down, and after yeah. you know, like later on, he was back in the pool. I think. Yeah, because nowadays, like but it if, was like he would have he would have drowned, like yeah. in in a pool with his parents probably standing right next to him. Yeah, they were like, I mean, it was adults. Every, I mean, I was I was next to him. So was so many other people. They, it was just so like busy that no one really like noticed that he was in there flailing. Yeah, that drowning stuff. It's so because. Now, it, would, have you ever given mouth to mouth to anyone? If I ever given mouth to mouth. Uh, no, no. But in physical therapy school, you had to learn how to do it. So I did have to do practice mouth to mouth. I want to take a person. CPR and all that stuff and how because the last thing I ever want to do is be in a position where I, if I would have known that it would have helped someone, especially like a loved one, you know, and I don't know it. So I want to do that. But yeah, but you don't know CPR, and you saved Chaz Palminteri's life from well, choking on the sandwich. He, oh, yeah. said, he said I did it so poorly, he's hired someone to teach me, so maybe we'll all do it and film it. Oh, <laughs> we'll I would do that. I would do that. We were going to have someone come to the house, a service. Because yeah. during COVID, I was like, let me, let me better myself. Yeah, God you forbid. Know, so, yeah, no. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I, but you do it on the dummy, but then it's, my friend was like, oh, I just took my whole course online. And I was like, but there's no, there's no interaction. No, you have with to physically them. practice. They're like, no, but they just tell you what to do. And I was like, I don't know if I think that's. Yeah, I took my real estate course online, yeah. and I was a real real estate agent for years. I have no idea. Really? I, no, I don't know anything. And you, you were a licensed real estate yeah, agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I told you, freaking the guy who played Pugsley in the Adams Family took a COVID swab test thing online and been giving me the COVID swab for the last three and a half months and then tells me out of nowhere he's fucking Pugsley from the Adams Family. <laughs> I can't believe he gave me the COVID test and then an hour yeah, later, an hour later, our trailer broke down, the air conditioning shut off, and then he treated the generator. Yeah, he kept, and that's how we <laughs> found out because he came in, the air conditioner broke on in my trailer and I said, it was relatively hot. I said, hey, like, you know, texted the showrunner and I said, can somebody send something to fix the air conditioner? And Jim Jimmy showed up. I was like, oh, no, I don't need a COVID test. So I was like, is something wrong with my COVID test? He goes, no, I'm here to fix the air conditioner. <laughs> I said, well, excuse me? <laughs> He's like, I'm union and I'm COVID. <laughs> <laughs> the Adam family. <laughs> Dude. He's uh yeah man it's just a it's just a in this town in Los Angeles you just don't know you just don't know who everybody's in the industry everybody's in the industry yeah. you know it's another fun fact we learned yesterday Chatsworth used to be the porn capital of the world right over here in the valley we're not staying far from there then California made a condom rule where when you shoot porn in California that they, they, they ha you have to be wearing a condom yeah. so they moved all the porn to Las Vegas and Chatsworth whose economy was built up on renting out their homes for the porn industry is now turning into disarray because California you know want to make everyone wear condoms so we found that there's actually a big they're trying to bring condomless porn back to Chatsworth so if you guys want to go to um our website <laughs> To, uh, heybabe.com Do we even have heybabe.com? No press No press.com No press.com Or no Email us Heybabepodcast At gmail.com And figure out ways On how we can help Get condomless sex Back to Chatsworth, California <laughs> Me and Sal Have talked about it off air That we'd like to be advocates <laughs> For that Is that just the industry Or everyone in Chatsworth? What, yeah, yeah I mean First of all If you You know Listen We all like porn If you're wearing a condom In porn I'm out Oh, yeah, you're not going to watch that. I don't want to watch that. Yeah. I don't want to watch porn with a condom. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. I want. I need it to be condomless. I was watching actually porn the other day because obviously <laughs> I've been... No, this is a crazy thing. I, I've, I've been in... You know, I'm in the staying at the Garland Hotel. It gets lonely. I've been there a week and a half. I was watching a fair amount of porn. I was watching it the other day, like on my stay, this trip in the Garland, and I kept saying like, what? The I, I am positive. I am positive. The actor... Who was in this porn? Who was name I don't know was on Pornhub. Pornhub.com. Shout out. Dylan Pro McDermott. Promo code. Hey, babe. Dermot Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney <laughs> was having sex with this woman, and he had genital warts. He had warts all over his penis. Oh. And I was like, like that's I've interesting. Never, I don't know if I know. I don't know if I could recognize that. No, he had warts. He had warts on his penis. Watching, you know, doing porn and warts on his penis. David's about to have time, and I might have, I might have said it on Hey, babe. So please stop me if I did. But that I ended up at stop. A <laughs> <laughs> no time. Yeah. No, no. I um. 
No, did I ever tell you about the time? And stop me again. No, 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 not really. Um, that I, I found myself in a famous porn producer's home. What? Yeah, and he wasn't home. How did so that happen? The first time I ever, vi- the first time I ever visited Los Angeles was January in 1995. I came out here and stayed with my friend's older cousin, who just signed a huge record contract with Warner Brothers Records for his band Sister Whiskey. Okay, good name like, for a band. Yeah, it was like you love sisters, you love whiskey. Yeah, it was a good band. They were like a rock and roll band, almost like a poison. Okay, it was a good time rock and roll band. It was like the mid '90s. It was like we were still very much. That was very much like getting airplay and things like that. Sure. And uh, one of that guy's friends was house sitting for a porn producer, a famous porn producer named Bruce Seven. You can look him up. It's a real guy. I think he's passed on now because I recently looked this up because I remembered it and I was like, I wonder if, the, and I remember if I remember, Bruce Seven. So the guy's cat sitting. So he goes, it is dude. He's long hair rocker, like ripped pants. He, he walked around. With, he's one of those guys never wore shoes or socks. Right. He's like, yeah. He's like, come by the house. He's like, I'm poor. He's like, I'm house sitting for this guy. You know, Bruce Seven. And it was like in the valley or the hill or whatever right. it was. So we go and it's a beautiful house. He opens the front door. There's a big, big like um, set of uh, shelves, and at that time it was VHS still. Okay, and no joke, dude. There was thousands of porn VHSs cat of his that he made. This producer cataloged in alphabetical order on the wall, like 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 five five shelves double wide. Right, and all his awards from the Avians were all, all on the shelves. Gorgeous so, house, very nice house. Yeah, it was not like a mansion, but it was a very nice house. So we go, and he's like, yeah, just come in. It was sitting a little. He goes, oh, check this out. <laughs> no. <not that> <laughs> so he goes, <laughs> wait, all right, we'll get to that. He, <laughs> you know, he, goes, he goes, check this out. You want to see something cool? And he takes us into the, uh, down the hall, and he opens up a room, and it's like a big, big, like, walk-in closet, and it's just dildos, vibrators, whips, outfits, chests of feathers, all, just all this wow. porn stuff, butt plugs, this, everything in there. And we're like, oh my God. And he's like, yeah. He's like, he goes, the other job I do, besides watching the cats, he's like, Clean all the dildos. <laughs> he's, he's like, and I'm the guy speaking because that's what made me think of Connors. He goes, I'm the guy that if, if they need anything and you see like a hand come in, that's my hand. Wow. And he wears gloves. And so, so, we, so then we go and we're sitting in the guy's living room. We're sitting on the couch and he go, and, and we're like, wow, this is crazy. He goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, you want to see one of them? So we're like, yeah. He throws in a, a tape, right? And he hits play, and we're all sitting there. It's, it's like five of us, and we're sitting there. We're like, oh wow! And all of a sudden, these people are having sex on the couch that we're sitting, sitting on. on. That's yeah. hilarious. And it was a big self-made metal, steel metal contraption that looked like a, 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 a in, in the living room with swings, like a swing, a sex swing in it. And they would go and tie them to, and, and use this contraption. And we were like, look at this thing. And then that's why we're like, wait, did they have? Did they do that in here? And he goes, watch this. And they were on the couch. We're like, oh. Oh my oh. God. And, then, and then he, a hand came in with oil. He goes, "That's my hand, dude." <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him as the first guest on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Just his. <laughs> that's crazy. Do you think? Do you think you could, if I put, like, I put your penis in a picture of thirty other penises, flaccid penises? You could guess which penis and balls were yours. I, I have to admit, I, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> like usual suspects. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to imagine. No, a thirty. I mean, I'm not going to tell. I mean, maybe it was twenty thousand, but like thirty penis. I'm not going to. I mean, I've been looking at it my whole life. I don't know if you could, man. It's very difficult to know which one because they all kind of look the same. Yeah. The penis and balls kind of look the same yeah. on, you know? Well, you, you think that you might have trouble. I don't know. I mean, I, and, unless you had like a botched circumcision, I think it's tough. Yeah. Ah. I, th- I don't know. But I, I could be wrong. I, could, I just thought, I just thought, you know, by the way, and you mentioned quickly butt plugs. What is, I said plugs. Did you say plugs? I said plugs. Oh, I think you said butt plugs. Well, I was inferring that. I just left the butt out. But what? Do you, what is what? Like what? I guess I don't, don't understand. Because I, I understand what that does. I get that's a blood flow thing. But what is a butt plug doing for you? It's unclear. It, does anybody know? I, because it, people, the butt. Is I mean, it just something there? Is something stimulating? I don't know. I guess maybe that's what it is. Because if you go further enough into the butt, you can massage 
a man's prostate, which I guess feels good. Is, wait, but you mean wait, when you say mis- you mean like te- like medically? Yeah, no, no. I think that pro- it says it hits the P spot, which I assume is prostate, which is the prostate. Oh, ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, like if you want to go donate sperm and you don't want to masturbate, a nurse can go in and just put her fingers up your butt and hit your prostate, and you'll shoot sperm out of your penis. That's not true. I think it Please. is. Please, that true? Yes. What is your, what, I donated, what state is the penis I in? donated sperm once, and the nurse came in. She said, would you like... You're kidding, come on now. Come on. She said, she, come on. she said to me, would you like to watch... Um, we have pornographic film here. She said, or I can come in and stimulate your prostate. Which would you like? I said, both. Um, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I did donate sperm. And that that's what happened. But when did I, you donate sperm? I don't know. Ten years ago? For what? I was like a senior in college. For what reason? No, no, no. I must have not. I was a senior in graduate school. For what reason? Cash? Yeah, I got 150 bucks. And I don't know. I just uh, donated it. I thought... Well, I think that, well, the reason why, the reason why I initially is because my last year of graduate school, I forgot what it was. Like, so, there was something, somebody was talking about like a shortage of sperm or people like in something with in vitro, or whatever. So, me and another one of my classmates, we just went and we donated our sperm. But I specifically signed paperwork to say at that point, it's a. I guess like sometimes I think about it. I'm like, I wonder whatever happened with that. But I said I didn't want you. You legally, they know like you know my race, you know, uh, uh, you know ethnicity, eye color, height, education level, all those things. That's known because like you know you have to tell a, yeah. a woman that, right. but not my name or information. So so wow. I very well could have a wow. child out there from my sperm that. Maybe one day that's, I'll run into. That's unbelievable. Yeah, but I, you, you know now people are finding both criminals and relatives with all the twenty three and Me stuff because they'll tell you this person is your relative because the DNA matches. Wow. So you might get a knock. One Maybe day. one day. <laughs> oh my right. God. Yeah, I I don't know. What by, you, by the way, the prostate's called the male G spot, so it's a thing. Oh, it is. Yeah. But am I right about if you just if you just hit the prostate, it just shoot the glue right out? Well, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some work to it, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that in my life. Uh-huh. What is it about that that triggers that? I don't even understand. Because I think your prostate, whatever, like your male anatomy, it just, that's what, that's where this semen comes from. I have no clue. Well, it comes from out of, right out of your Cowper's gland. Because I, I've I'm told you. I'm surprised you don't see like, speaking of pornography, then you don't see pornography like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't actually mean to uh, derail this conversation about no. the men's prostate. Right. <laughs> But when I think of a man, and I think of a real man, I only think of one person. I just want to say just shout out to Tom Brady for uh, him and the Bucks won the Super Bowl. They did. Uh, and, and it was in Tampa. And mm-hmm. this guy's 43 years of age. He had yeah. this guy in the Super Bowl. So I just want to give a little shout out to him. Shout out to him. And I would be remiss to say if we didn't also congratulate Patrick Mahomes uh, oh, from the Kansas City Chiefs. Future. What an arm. What a future. Those guys both may be in Los Angeles right now. They could absolutely. I mean, L.A. is the town. They could be. Right here in L.A. Absolutely. At this, at this moment. At I was going to start to sing, <laughs> from this is, moment. Is it Kelly Clarkson? I don't know who sings that. Did I ever tell you about the time that I found myself in London at, at a brunch, the brunch of like a very, 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 very extremely wealthy family's home? No. And I walked in, there was only like 10 people there, maybe 15, 10, 15 people there. Like literally, like type of thing where like there was caviar on the table oh my god like self-serve right right Liv tyler was there <gasps> liam one of the the, the one dylan of the, mcdermott no the, the guy from oasis one of the brothers one of the two the one that's not traditionally known to be mean yeah i think liam liam, liam yeah. woody harrelson owen wilson did i ever tell you about this no and i and i just w- walked in and they were there and i ended up having brunch with them and then there was a pa- with Woody Harrelson? Yes. And there was a there was a panic room? No. In the house because these people were so I mean, dude, there was a there was a panic room in the house and we went down to the panic room and this has been hey babe. Ah! Oh! Yeah. Damn. Uh, uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed.